any new AI initiative you're introducing a business has to interact with other business processes. In this video, I will show you how to avoid bottlenecks when introducing a new AI initiative in your business. Hi there, I'm Calvin Fernandez, your AI advisor, and welcome to another AI shop. You know, business, businesses only work if they are in a perfect balance, and you will find yourself that any new initiative, any new activity you're introducing a business will temporarily create disturb that, that point of equilibrium and will cause some distress on different activities that potentially will lead to, to bottlenecks, right? With the AI, the main issue is that it can cause like an exponential, a huge impact on the business activities, so it can dramatically impact and disturb this equilibrium, introducing very drastic bottlenecks. These bottlenecks in the end will potentially affect the expected impact that you have from your AI model up to a point where maybe you will even observe that there was not impact at all, not because AI wasn't doing a good job, but because the rest of the, rest of the business didn't adapt fast enough to the new reality. If you want to know about, know about how to introduce AI use cases in your business, there is an online course, the Data AI online course. There is a free preview in the link down in the description. So let me give you two examples of how can this happen that actually happened to us on some previous projects. One of them was a, a project for scoring, you know, or for, for deciding where had we to uh, had we to contact uh, each lead. So we had a, a set of leads, batches of leads, and we had to decide, you know, what was the right the best time for contacting each one of these of these leads. And something that happened here is that the algorithm was actually very efficient on deciding how and when to contact each potential lead, leading to a shorter clo uh, journey for closing those leads. In the end, the algorithm was so good that we finished the batch earlier, faster than usual, so the client had to go and force himself to sell more to the bad leads, okay? So in the end, although we were recommending what was the best lead to contact, what was the best script, the best you know timing, we, did, we weren't observing better results just because we had to address those leads that were actually not bringing any sales or any value. What we had to do actually was to adjust our lead acquisition cycles, shortening these cycles, or even bringing more leads within the same batch because we were able to process them at a faster speed and with higher conversion rates. The same thing happened with another project about recommendations where the client had his, let's say, budget per asset uh, adjusted to his current reality, which was basically recommendations through manual processes between a salesman and um, and the final client, right? When we got the recommender system in place, those budgets, those quotas that they had regarding how much attraction any asset could bring were too restrictive for a massive scale of marketing campaigns. And after a few weeks, we just exhausted the full, the full budget we had for the, by budget, I mean the quotas that we had for recommending. Um, these assets uh, to the to the to the end users, limiting in the end the actual uh, reach that this, this the actual reach that these AI models could bring to the business. So what we had to do again was to adjust the quota of recommendation that we could handle, and allowing the AI model to you know grow through to its full potential. Okay, so something that we always uh, advise to do whenever you are putting an AI model in production uh, in any business is Let's say you have the AI model as one additional activity in your business, okay? This activity will have to interact with all the other activities that exist uh, as now in the business. So you will have to look at all the activities that precede, that come before the AI. So let's say there is one activity here, there is another activity here, and another activity here. So let's say we have these three activities and also the activities that go after the that follow the AI, okay? So that the ones that are fed by the AI. For example, the activities that precede the AI, um, acquiring leads, for example, um, I don't know, purchasing materials, for example, screening patients, the activities that follow the AI, for example, and executing the sales. So once you sell, executing those, those contracts, uh, booking appointments for those that actually answer that they want to do uh, a visit or they want to try your product. For example, 
applying the treatment. So if you are better, uh, if you are better in diagnosing patients, providing the right treatment to those patients. So look at all the activities that go that come before the AI. So the ones that will feed the AI and the ones that follow the AI, the ones that go after the AI. Okay. And we will need to understand basically how these activities can handle the change on demand, the change on, on the stress level that we will put them on the, on the AI. So let, we're using the AI. So let's look first at activities that follow the AI. Let's say that the AI increases production, okay? So whatever we put into the AI, the, whatever the, it's the current outcome of the activity that is, that is right here in the current workflow, we will have more outcome. You need to ask yourself, activities here be able to handle the surplus, the, the, the additional uh, outcomes of those products uh, without getting into any stress level, without compromising their maximum capacity. Okay, so this is what you need to understand. It, let's say they can handle it all good. Let's say they cannot handle it. So you will have to make sure you reduce the capacity of the activities that go on before the AI so such that with lower inputs, you can produce same level of results in the end, spending less, spending less money and producing the same level of results uh, that the uh, that activities that follow the AI are capable of handling. Same thing for the other activities. Let's say um, for the activities that precede the AI, will they be able to produce more inputs so the AI can process them faster? Yes or no. Or for example, let's say that we are using an AI that is capable of using less resources, okay? For example, an AI that produce, that detects damages on products so it spends less resources on producing the same amount of product. Will you be able to downscale your suppliers team or your supplying contracts so you purchase less materials because you will be able to reach the same quota of production with less waste? That's what you need to assess here. So you will be, will you be able to in, uh, upscale or downscale any of these activities in order to meet the demand of the AI model. This demand can be on the input side, more or less input, or can be on the output side, okay? More or less output, same thing here. Okay, so in the end, you just need to assess how much, capa how much stress will the AI put into all the other business activities around it. Let's say that the, uh, that the answer here is that yes, you have a elastic capacity on all of these activities, then it's all good. You just need to inform them that potentially during your pilots, you may cause some stress level and they need to be prepared for it. Okay. So nothing, don't do anything drastic last now, like, it's like hiring more salesmen or whatever until you reach this point, but have these discussions with the other departments. So they are prepared for it. Then let's say the opposite. So they don't have elastic capacity. Let's say they have a rigid capacity. Let's say that you thought that the AI was going to be able to move the needle, I don't know, from here to here, but you realize that there is an activity that will cap, will be an upper bound of your capacity because that activity cannot scale after a certain level, which will put the limit of the AI, the AI opportunity size to this level. You need to ask yourself, considering that my maximum capacity, my maximum opportunity size is not this value X, but is this new value Y, is it an opportunity worth pursuing or not? So should I follow this, this application? Should I follow this initiative? Or given my current constraints, it will be just too small to make any profit out of it. So that's the decision you need to make. I hope you like this video. Remember to like, subscribe, for the season. Bye bye.